Can you confirm that City Hall report for us? Are you looking to spread the Times Square model around the city? Well, we've been actually doing that over the last two and a half years. We've been working on the Plaza program uh, in all five boroughs, and it's been very well received. And uh, in light of the success that we saw in Times Square on Broadway, we've had uh, a lot of interest further south, uh, below 23rd Street, to extend the green carpet uh, all the way down to Union Square. So we're exploring that right now. Who's in contention to be rolled out next outside Manhattan, and what would make you say yes or no? We're looking at uh, Fordham Road, uh, Fordham Plaza. We're taking a look at uh, communities in Brooklyn uh, and Staten Island. And and we basically have a a competition where we ask communities to submit their ideas uh, for what they'd like to see in in terms of additional new green space and new public plazas. And so that uh, submission process is in place right now. And so we're encouraging everybody to send us their ideas, and we will work with them not only to renovate the, the spaces on an interim basis, but then also move forward to make them more permanent in the capital program. And listeners, we can open the phones on this for a few minutes. We don't have too long for this segment, but if you want to nominate a few blocks in your neighborhood to be a car-free pedestrian zone, like the five blocks of Broadway are now from 42nd to 47th Street, you can call in and talk to the Transportation Commissioner, 212-433-WNYC, 433-9692, or post it to wnyc.org. Click on Brian Lair Show. We'll make sure they get the link um, to all your ideas. And, Commissioner, I gather that you're ready to take the next step with respect to Broadway? Well, New York City is constantly changing, and so we were very excited to see the results uh, that we saw in the Green Light for Midtown program. Traffic is moving well. It's much better space for pedestrians, and it's terrific for business. And so what we're looking to do now is, now that the mayor has announced that this will be a permanent feature of New York City streetscape, we are announcing actually this morning uh, that we are going to be releasing uh, an RFP for a design competition for folks that live and work in New York City. Uh, to submit their design ideas uh, for what this new space can look like as we await the capital program. That's to replace the patio furniture that everybody thought was tacky? (laughs) Well, we're going to refresh the look and the feel of Times Square as uh, we're looking to have the capital uh, construction project uh, kick in around 2012, and we'll be working with the city's uh, design and construction agency, which has a design excellence program. Um, but we think that the world's greatest stage for urban design and streetscape is, and innovation is really Times Square, and so we're looking to build on that unique quality. Although, you know, on the day you announced that the Times Square experiment was being made permanent last month, it was still very easy for us to get as many opponents as supporters in the call-in that we did that day, and they weren't all owners of private cars. So are there inevitably winners and losers in a change like this, even if you think it's for the greater good? Well, what we saw is, despite the fact that we took Broadway as a through street out of the system, what we did is we connected, reconnected 7th Avenue. And for the first time uh, in the history of the city of New York, it actually flows better. And that's what we saw, that we analyzed 2 million uh, taxi trips with our GPS, uh, Global Positioning System Technology. And it showed that all across the board, north and south and east and west, traffic flow better. And so it was also very important for us to see what happened to the pedestrian experience there. And we saw that uh, pedestrian injuries went down some 35 percent just since we implemented the change. And motorist injuries also went down 63 percent. So it was a really important uh, change from the safety perspective. It was a really important change in terms of just making the traffic flow better. You know, a lot of times people think, you know, Uh, Traffic flow in Midtown is sort of an oxymoron, but we were able to show that, you know, it's a problem that's been hidden in plain sight for 200 years, and you can can make some changes. One of the complaints that we got from a few callers was that the buses that run downtown actually go slower, takes them longer to get through that area. Did you measure that one way or another? Yeah, we took a look at that, and buses were about 2% slower uh, going uh, southbound, uh, but we also increased the headways, so you only have less than a minute to pick up another bus uh, that's going through the Times Square corridor. And importantly, on 6th Avenue, buses went some 17% faster. So, you know, again, it's a matter of managing a really complex network. And, you know, Times Square is always going to be congested, but what we need to do is better balance uh, the modes and uh, the investment that we're making in the people, the 356,000 people that use that space every day. All right. Steve in Manhattan has another place he'd like to be close to cars. Steve? Hi, Brian. I uh, applaud the car-free areas all across Manhattan, but I think the most obvious one and one that is really a no-brainer is Central Park. 
both because of its purpose of usage. All of Central Park, even in Central rush Park hour. at all times. How, how much have you ever considered that? Certainly people call in with that suggestion all the time. Well, within the first year, uh, within the last two years, we've actually expanded the car-free hours in Central Park. And I think that Central Park is now closed to cars some 98% of the time. Uh, so it's really basically open during the peak hours. Uh, and, and again, it's something that we've been looking at. But again, it's a balancing act in terms of uh, you know, understanding how the traffic flows uh, through this important part of uh, the city. I want to ask you about the plan for a new kind of dedicated bus lane on part of 34th Street. That will include, I gather, closing off a stretch entirely to private cars? This is a very exciting project that we've been working on for several years. We will have a fully dedicated bus rapid transit way on 34th Street, and we'll be able to connect uh, both rivers, river to river, uh, uh, on a separated right-of-way for buses. And so it will take in important transportation hubs like Penn Station uh, and the Empire State Building, and we think it's going to be a really important uh, investment in the mobility network uh, in this highly congested part of town. 